Good morning all, or it might be afternoon, or it might be evening. I can't control when you watch this. Now today's video is going to be about this, uh, Muppet 2. It might also be about this, my new breadboard, my new breadboard for Muppet 2. So one thing that this uh, fantastic weather has yielded is this. I went outside, cut up a piece of wood and drill a load of holes in it uh, not very well as you can see this is plywood and i didn't put a piece of wood on as a base and so the um the last layer just broke and splintered off but it doesn't really matter what this is is a new breadboard for muppet 2 because one of the problems is well i mean you can see what the problem is here i'm running out of terminal posts um one thing i don't really like is the way these terminal posts take three of these fork terminal connectors and as you adjust it they all kind of rotate and twirl around and so I thought if I group them in groups of three like this and then on the bottom I've cut these short actually because they did protrude a bit far I've done it slightly differently this time last time I just sunk the um, metal thread into the wood this time I've drilled larger holes and I've actually sunk the plastic uh, thread this bit here into the wood so what i can do is i can just run some wire kind of in a figure of eight around there and um solder that on so these will be grouped in the one in one inch pitch they'll be grouped together and across a two inch span um, there will be a break so that i can connect uh, components onto here so for example in the final incarnation of muppet where we've got four mosfets one across one down another one down and another one across um, the inductor will go there well in fact I might do that now I might put that on there um, one MOSFET down there one down there uh, one MOSFET across that span there another one across there and then the ground will all be hooked up and other things can be connected on here like for example uh, load on the output this bulb for example capacitor on the output something I've still yet to do I want positions for ammeters, voltmeters, um, so that we can measure what's going on here. So this, yes, this is the final Muppet 2 uh, nicely made, properly dimensioned breadboard. So let's make a start. Let's get that inductor. I probably will be using the bigger inductor. Um, get it off there, unscrew that terminal post. Um, I probably will use this bigger inductor so that I can keep the frequency lower that means that i can carry on using the opto isolator mosfet driver um, so that's going to go there now this these terminal posts are lower down on the wood so i'll probably have to um, make some sort of bend changes to this let's just do that right that looks pretty good so i can put that in across these two points here um, get that fitted nice onto there and i've only got um, I only want to have one item per terminal post to worry about to sort of stop the rotation that happens when you tighten these up. So those will be linked underneath to these points. So the MOSFETs will connect there. They won't interfere with the um, fork terminals of the inductor, which will sit there. Yes, I'm liking that already. Now, something else I want to do, um, I'll take this MOSFET out. That That's just awful. I mean, that just didn't work. It's a mess. I'm going to do it a different way. I'll probably actually make up these MOSFETs with the little um, DuPont connectors on them for source and uh, gate, gate and source, that's right, um, so that I can connect that in through to the Arduino and the, uh, the driver, the uh, opto isolator driver. But I also want to put probably wire-ended fork terminals on this so it'll sort of sit up and have a wire coming around that way and a wire coming around that way. But another thing I wanted to do here on the original uh, version that had a diode, of course it was pretty stupid having these fork terminals pointing out at each end, because you can't actually get it in there without bending it. So I think um, on this version, diode for example might sit, uh, no it won't sit there, well it'll sit there um, before the inductor. So I might go for a diode that has side angled fork connectors that might be a bit of a problem so what i'll probably go for is a compromise a sort of halfway house where these bend around 45 degrees and then the fork terminals um, come out so that i can just sort of put that in there and then slide it in 
sideways so that may not fit directly across there it might sit slightly to one side I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do that yet and then there's another one here I've got three connections on this terminal post um, one is simply just a fork terminal with a DuPont square section uh, wire on it to ground the watt meter because of course the watt meter has to measure amps flowing across the top here on the high side but it also measures volts between the high side and the low side so it needs a, a grounding wire now I can put that uh, terminal on one of these three posts well why don't I do it now let's uh, dismantle this so yeah this is better my load um, which is my 5 watt lamp can uh, sit on these two my grounding point which is just as I say a square section pin into um, this fork terminal can go on the next one and I can just keep them all separate so that one I can tighten up there and keep it nice and neat that's the grounding wire and then there'll be a link wire like that so I'll make up another one but it'll probably be again a sort of uh, angled sectioned thing so that I'm not fighting trying to get it between two terminal posts but yeah I'll have a grounding wire running across there to sort of complete this uh, ground line. So what exactly is Muppet 2? Well the name Muppet came from MPPT, Maximum PowerPoint Tracking, um, which you get on MPPT solar charge controllers and I was trying to build an MPPT solar charge controller. Now the original uh, MPPT controller I built, Muppet, Muppet 1, um, was based around a buck converter. So it's this very simple uh, topology. This came from Wikipedia. It's simply um, an inductor here. That would be the last stage. There's the load. There would be a diode here. In fact, I can put that diode there just temporarily to show where it goes. A diode from this point to ground, pointing upwards, and a switch here, which will be um, a MOSFET. What did I do with that MOSFET? Yeah, so there's one there. I can put that uh, in there just to show where it goes. So a MOSFET switch in the top line there, which we can switch on and off using an Arduino. That gives us a buck converter functionality. So here's my original uh, Muppet project, Muppet 1, you could call it. So it had an Arduino, it had a display because I wanted to sort of see um, everything that was being measured. Here's the buck converter. I did it as a Y formation. So there's the MOSFET switch there, there's the diode uh, running down to the bottom and there's the inductor. Uh, the last experiment I did on this was with a very very uh, small number of turns on this large ferrite inductor. Uh, this thing also has voltage measurement, current measuring using these ACS712s I think they're called. We had capacitors on the input, capacitor on the output, a very large capacitor in the buck converter section. Don't quite know why I put it there. Um, again, current measuring, voltage measuring, and everything was displayed on this display. Now the thing about Muppet 2 is that I want it to be not just a buck converter, this thing, but also that you can uh, configure it as a boost converter. So I'm just printing out the uh, boost converter page from Wikipedia. So I'll cut out the boost converter diagram and explain how this can be either a buck or a boost, or later a buck boost. Right, so here's the diagram from uh, Wikipedia's boost converter um, article. I'm just going to cut that out and then I'm going to sit it side by side with the buck converter and explain how they can be kind of munged together. Right, so this is buck and this is boost and if you kind of sit and stare at this for long enough you realize that the two can be combined. In other words you can put the inductor dead center of a breadboard like this and construct the elements of both a boost converter or a buck converter. Let's do a little drawing. So combining elements of the uh, buck converter and the boost converter, let's put the inductor um, dead center there. Now for the buck, we need a preceding a diode pointing up. So I'll draw that in like so and that goes to ground. Um, for the boost we need a diode pointing out to the final load so let's draw that in which goes that way that's not a very good diode is it so that's uh, there um, now for the buck we need a MOSFET switch 
uh, up here. So let's draw that in. Now I'm going to draw the body diode part of this first. It's going to look like um, that, a diode pointing that way. And then I'll just sort of allude to the MOSFET by doing something along those lines. So that's the MOSFET. I'm not too concerned about uh, controlling these MOSFETs at the moment, but there's a MOSFET with its body diode pointing that way. Now this also can become a MOSFET. You don't have to turn it on, but that can be a MOSFET with its body diode pointing that way. Now these would all be N-channel MOSFETs, of course, so um, in each case this will be the source. So let's mark that in, source, and this will be the source, uh, and that will be drain, and that will be drain. Um, this can also be a MOSFET, and in the case of um, a buck converter where this diode is replaced with a MOSFET to make a synchronous buck converter, um, it makes good sense to have a MOSFET here. So let's also uh, make this one a MOSFET, like so. And I'll put the uh, gate in there. And then you can add in a final MOSFET, which is um, this switch here, which has to be a MOSFET, of course, because you need to switch it on and off. So there's yet another MOSFET. Um, diode first, of course, the body diode there, but that's also a MOSFET. And let's put the gate in there. And what you end up with is a completely symmetrical circuit. So if you stare at this for long enough, you realize that, uh, let's actually use the pointer here, that this can be the buck converter because I can have the MOSFET here um, operating as that switch. This can just be the diode. In fact, if you just link gate and source together on this MOSFET, which is exactly what I did uh, here, just simply link them together. So this can never, the MOSFET part of this can never switch on. This just behaves as a diode. So um, with that switch, the inductor there, and this um, acting as just the body diode, just as a diode using the body diode, um, this becomes a buck converter. Now you do need to switch this uh, MOSFET on, or you could just use this diode actually. You could probably leave this switched off and it would still allow energy flow from left to right through that body diode. This one, of course, would uh, not want to be turned on, but as a diode, it's not going to do any harm sitting across the load just as a diode pointing upwards. So uh, this one in terms of the MOSFET would be switched off. Um, but you can also make this circuit operate as the boost converter. Um, this MOSFET would need to be actually turned on in this case because you need to allow current to flow that way. It's not going to do that through that diode facing the wrong way. So you'd need to turn that MOSFET on. Um, you've then got the inductor. You then need this one operating as a switch. So this one would be pulse width modulated. And this one, you could just short uh, gate and source together. And this one then just operates as that diode going out towards the load. So you'd have a load there on that back end. But because this is totally symmetrical, not only can you have this operating as either a buck or a boost converter current flowing or energy flowing from left to right, you can also just change the way you drive these MOSFETs and have it flowing from right to left. So this is far more than Muppet 1 was because Muppet 1 was designed to have a solar panel on the input and a lead acid battery on the output. This can have a solar panel left, lead acid battery right, it could have a lead acid battery left, battery right, supercapacitor left, battery right, supercapacitor left, back, uh, supercapacitor right. And say you had a supercapacitor both sides, you could first transfer energy from the left supercapacitor through to the right supercapacitor. As the voltage level swapped over, of course, you'd need to switch from it being a buck converter to a boost converter. Then when you've transferred all the energy from the left side to the right side, you could reconfigure this circuit and transfer all the energy back the other way again. What fun. So this is Muppet 2. Muppet 2 can be, um, if I want it to be, the same as Muppet 1 using a simple buck converter topology. Uh, some of these MOSFETs would have to be on, some of them are off, some of them just behave as diodes. This can be a maximum power point tracking solar charge controller with a solar panel on the left and a lead acid battery on the right. But it can be far more, and this is why I'm calling it Muppet 2. The name is good, the name will stick, but it's far more than just um, a base for a possible maximum power point tracking solar charge controller. It can be a general purpose, bi-directional energy transfer system from pretty much anything on the left to pretty much anything on the right. Okay, um, if you have a power supply on the left, 
and a bulb on the right. What you can't do is, of course, have a power supply on one side and a power supply on the other. You can't transfer energy from one power supply to another. That wouldn't work. So Muppet 2 is an important project because it can be so many things and that's why it needed um, a, new, a new baseboard. It had very much outgrown this thing so that's going to go uh, into my uh, historical department. Yeah, this is the new baseboard for all of the various experiments I'm going to do uh, with Muppet 2. Of course I have already done some. I've built simple buck converters and measured efficiency and that sort of thing.